Welcome back everyone, on this episode of Toys Other Way, we will be taking a look at my finalized Throne of Mandalore display. I'm very happy with how this looks, hopefully you enjoy it too. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like down below, it really helps the channel. So with that being said, let's move on to the video. As you can see, I have a lot of Mandalorian troops here, and I finally received my five cases of Death Watch Airborne Troopers and just knew that I had to open them up and quickly add them to finish off this display. So very happy to finally have these ones in the collection. So initially I ordered five cases of this figure because I wanted to have 40 of the Death Watch Airborne Mandalorians and 40 of the Maldalorians all engulfed in a giant battle on this shelf. So it feels really nice to finally have them all added to the collection and with that being said, let's take a closer look and see what's going down. Here we have an amazing vintage collection figure. We have this Bo-Katan who is absolutely essential for any Battle of Mandalore display. Um, she looks really great. Love having this figure. She's leading all the Death Watch airborne troopers to take back the throne of Mandalore because no outsider will ever rule Mandalore. And in the back we have Maul and Ahsoka in a lightsaber battle in the throne room. I know that the initial battle didn't really happen in the throne room, it was outside, but I thought this was such an iconic setting that it would be nice to just have everyone in here, you know, the lightsaber battle and just all the Mandalorians, Death Watch Mandalorians and clone troopers engaged in battle. So regardless, I think that looks really cool. Uh, here you can see one of the amazing 332nd troops that we recently got. I have a couple of those sprinkled throughout, but most of this is just Maldalorians and Death Watch Airborne Troopers all engaged in battle. And as you can see, we have some casualties, we have lots of different posing going on. Here is actually a custom uh, Night Owl that I made. This is just one of the Bo-Katans that I painted to remove some of her detailing on her helmet. So it looks a little bit different, you know, just a variety and troop there. I have a bunch more of those Casca Reeves figures that I haven't really opened yet but I plan to customize those as well as some like, you know, custom night owls to add to this display as well. And just taking a look, we have lots of different figures all throughout. We also have some Mandalorians in flight, which is absolutely essential in my opinion. Um, this was fun. I finally got some fishing wire, which as you can see is really subtle. So that is nice to have, you know, you can take a step back. This doesn't look too uh, obtrusive. It's not like a black, wire hanging down or anything so it just blends together nicely. Getting that uh, strung up was a little bit of a challenge. I basically just used some putty to adhere it to the ceiling and then tied a small knot and then put that on the peg of the jetpack and then inserted it into the figure. So not too bad but you know stringing fishing wire is actually pretty challenging. Uh, I think the worst part was trying to get it to adhere to the ceiling. Originally I was going to use scotch tape and it just wasn't working out so the putty was unfortunately the way it had to go. It's much more secure but it just doesn't look quite as clean but you know most people aren't really looking up at that when taking a look at this diorama. In here we have some of my favorite Mandalorians in flight. I just really like that captain in the background. Something about his flight pose just looks really nice. I also really like this guy in the front right here. He just looks like he just took off and he's off to like help someone out. You got some other uh, Maldalorians down below trying to shoot off at him as he takes off, so really nice stuff. I'm also a huge fan of this pose that I got going on here. Something about just like the rangefinder and the rifle being aimed downward to take out some of his opponents on the floor, just like it looks really nice, so that came off really cool. Uh, I also wanted to have these two Mandalorians in the back, these Maldalorians, protecting uh, Maul and his throne, so they look pretty cool back there. Got this other guy just like shooting at another Mandalorian in flight over there. Just like a lot of different like crossfire going on over here. So cool stuff, you know, like so many opponents on your backside just like coming at you. And yeah, you just got to really be alert in this battle. So looks really cool. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of casualties. We've got clones in the background have been taken out. Casualties on both sides. We've got some more clones over here holding the ground. Got another clone down over there, and yeah, there's just lots going on here. So, really cool stuff. Um, still some figures with, that we need for this display. Gar Saxon, that is absolutely somebody we're going to need. Very essential to the Siege of Mandalore. I would not mind getting uh, Savage Opress. 
He wasn't necessarily present during the Siege of Mandalore, but he was there when Maul assumed power. Hopefully one day we're going to get a pre Vizsla, because basically this figure is everything we need except for a different jetpack and a unique helmet, so hopefully that figure is coming one day. I wouldn't mind having a Duchess Satine. She's essential. She's not the most exciting character, but I would love to have a Duchess Satine added to just a general Mandalore display. But yeah, it's stuff to look forward to in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at my finished shelf diorama. Feel free to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. And be sure to drop a like on this video and remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Always helps and is greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and I will definitely see you on the next video.